Welcome back. We're looking at Final Cut Pro 10.3, its new features. We've looked at the audio rolls feature. We've looked at some of the editing enhancements and some of the workflow enhancements. Now we're gonna take a turn towards some of the more tweakier stuff like wide gamut, what Apple's calling wide gamut. Wide gamut, exactly right. And in fact, when you say that, you'll, you'll notice in Final Cut Pro 10.3, if you select a library and go over to library properties, at the very bottom, there's a new color processing section that allows you to choose between either standard or wide gamut. So what do these mean? These are Apple uh, terminology for different color spaces. And I think the easiest way to show it is to show a quick slide. So standard gamut, what Apple calls standard gamut, is really Rec 709, which is a set of standards or recommendations for HD material, really 1080 material. So some of the specs for it include the resolution, 1080, the frame rate, the bit depth, and the color space. Wide gamut refers to something called Rec 2020, which is the set of recommendations for UHD material. Okay, so four times the size of 1920 by 1080, 3840 by 2160. So there's a separate spec for that that includes the resolution, which is either 4K or 8K, uh, the frame rates, which are progressive only, the bit depth, which is 10 or up to 12, and the color space, which as you notice here, is a significantly higher percentage. Now, what does that really mean? Because what I really want to focus on here is the color space. This is what this is all about. So I'm going to go to a chart here. And the way we can think about this chart is representing all of the potentially capturable color, color that's available in nature that our eyes can see. Cameras can't capture it all. They can capture a subset of it. And then computers display a subset of it. Subset of it and then our screens display a subset of it. So this yellow triangle is Rec. 709. So that's HD's color space. So it's a much more narrower color space. Yes. And or another way to say it is this UHD TV or the Rec. 20 is a much larger color space. Potentially, it's this entire Rec. 2020 space. So you can see you get a lot more of these greens and cyans and even some more reds and magentas. So it's a larger color space. Now, who cares? Um, <laughs> what, what, what's good about this is cameras can capture this Rec. 2020 and cameras that shoot 4K. So if you're shooting anything where you're shooting log or red raw, red raw, red raw, you are capturing all of this color space. Final Cut Pro 10.3 now supports that color space natively. So you can keep working in that color space and you can even deliver in that color space. Now there's a, a couple uh, caveats about this is one is you need to be able to see it. Okay, because otherwise right. you can't really work with right. it. If you're working on a 709 monitor, you're not going to be able to see that extra right. color. You need, you need what's called a P3 monitor, and it needs to be connected over DisplayPort through your Thunderbolt connector because HDMI doesn't support this Rec. 2020. So you might say, okay, well, what's that involved? Well, there's third-party monitors that you can do that with, but any iMac uh, late 2015 or later, those are, quote, P3 monitors. And P3 is not exactly the same as Rec. 2020. It's a little bit smaller, but it's really close. And it's much larger than Rec. 709. So if you have a newer iMac and you work in Rec. 2020 and you've shot material or you're working with material that was shot in log, that's 4K material or Red Raw, you will be able to take advantage of this. Um, however, you may not see it at the end of the day, right? Because if you're displaying, if you're distributing and it's being displayed on you know, YouTube or Netflix or something, right now, nobody's gonna see that extra color space, but it's coming. Right. Uh, the, the standards out there, you can buy TVs that can, then, that can display that now. And uh, Netflix is even, we've heard that they are gonna be requiring material to be shot in Rec. 2020. So this is like Apple's future-proofing proof, itself with this uh, support of this color It space. is, it's allowing you to future-proof future your work. So right. here's one idea of the wide gamut workflow is that you capture in this wide gamut in this Rec. 2020, either in log or red raw, you work in Final Cut Pro 10 in Rec. 2020 on a, a monitor that supports it, a P3 monitor, and then you distribute uh, usually two different versions because you'll, you'll do Rec. 2020 for folks that can see it, but you usually also need to distribute a Rec. 709 submaster. So that's kind of the key here is how can you work in this wider space, but still deliver in what's traditional HD delivery. So let's take a quick look in Final Cut Pro about how this works. So first of all, as we've seen that the color space or the color processing space is set at the library level, at the top level. And by default, it's always set to standard, but I'm gonna choose wide gamut here. So I'll select that, and I get a warning because I don't have a brand new library. I have some clips in here. 
it's usually suggested that you start with a brand new fresh library when you're working in wide. Rather, and, than, and, rather than switch midstream. So right, or upgrading a library. You usually should start from scratch. It's the easiest way to go. Um, in our more in-depth tutorial, we go through some of the process of working with an existing library. So I'm going to go ahead and change to wide gamut. And now that I'm in wide gamut, and we can see right here that it's selected wide gamut. So now that I've set my library to the wide gamut, which is Rec 2020, when I create a new project, I have the option of working in Rec 2020 or in standard Rec 709. If this library were a standard library, I would only have the option of working in 709 for a project. So you set it at the library level, but projects themselves can be standard or wide, okay, as long as you're in wide for the library. So I'm going to set this to wide, Rec 2020. And I've actually already got an existing project. I'm going to show you that over in the inspector, we can see that it is set to Rec 2020. Okay. And I've thrown three clips in just to save some time. And these clips were shot in either log or red raw. So one thing I want to show you here, this clip here is shot for the C300, a Canon C300. And in the inspector, if we go to the settings view and we go to the log processing pop-up menu, we have a new Canon Log 2 Cinema Gamut profile. And this is new to 10.3, nice. just specifically for the C300 camera. So I'll apply that and we can immediately see that LUT get applied. Then I'll go to this middle clip that was shot with a Panasonic GH4 and its log processing can now be set to the Panasonic V-Log profile, which is also new in 10.3. Sweet. So I'll set that. And then for this first clip that is a red raw clip, I'll click on the Modify Red Raw Settings button, which is not new. But here in this HUD, you can now choose the Rec 2020 color space. And then you can choose the various gamma settings that you want to select. But here's how you can make sure that you're working with clips that are now in that Rec 2020 color space and taking advantage of all that color information. There's also Broadcast Safe um, for Rec 709 and Rec 2020 built in that you can apply in Final Cut. Nice. So, um, evolving science, evolving process, but Final Cut is positioning itself as being ready for that. One final thing is if you are grading in Resolve in Wide Gamut, you can now finish in Final Cut Pro 10.3 and stay in Wide Gamut. So and right. I think that'll be a big deal. So you round trip or what have you. Or you yes. You come, you come back into Final Cut, you're, you're good. Exactly. Nice. Well, that was a really, really great presentation, Mark, on... Uh, on this new wide gamut feature. I don't, there's a lot more to it. We, in our in-depth tutorial, we go, we go quite a bit further in how you deal with upgrading and, and actually go through several examples of this. But I wanted to give just an overview of kind of what's involved in this new feature. Excellent, uh, I, great job. So what are you gonna cover next? There's a couple more that you wanna show. Uh, I'll keep it as a surprise, All right. coming up soon. All right, we'll see you then.